Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and it's about time we've talked about some of the major updates from the mission on Mars, specifically the helicopter mission known as Ingenuity. And there have been some major updates, specifically in regards to the difficulty that the mission is facing right now. And there's really one major difficulty, it's becoming more and more challenging for the helicopter to fly on Mars. And so let's talk about some of these updates and some of these new discoveries and talk about the future of this mission as well. But let's obviously start with the question of what's so difficult about the flight and what's really happening with the helicopter. Well, obviously because of this mission, we've learned quite a lot about the Martian atmosphere and we've also learned a lot about the ability of helicopters to fly on Mars. As a matter of fact, the future missions that are probably going to be responsible for recovering some of the samples from Mars are already being changed to potentially being helicopters as well. For example, it's really impressive that the scientists, by just knowing what the atmosphere of Mars contained from some of the previous missions, were able to work out the exact size and the exact speed with which the helicopter blades had to spin in order for the helicopter to be able to fly and to be able to function for so many months. But when the mission was being created, nobody actually expected for the helicopter to last so long and for the mission continue past the initial five flights. And because NASA has now expanded the mission, the scientists behind Ingenuity are facing a lot of new challenges. One challenge here being Mars itself. And specifically, the Martian atmosphere and the Martian climatic changes. Because just like Earth, Mars also has seasons. And with every single season, the conditions on the Martian surface change quite dramatically. For example, in this recent study that you can find in the description below, the scientists investigated and actually helped us visualize how the conditions on the Martian South Pole change with these seasonal variations, specifically how the South Pole develops the ice caps. Now this is really interesting because it doesn't just develop the ice caps, it also changes the density of air and thus changes the overall pressure as well. So right here there's not enough ice and a lot of CO2 circulates around the Martian atmosphere increasing the overall pressure. But then, when the ice starts to freeze, the density and the pressure decrease creating different conditions for several months. And these seasonal changes are now affecting the Ingenuity probe as well. When the scientists were planning this mission a few years ago, they designed Ingenuity to withstand pressures that are approximately 1.2 to about 1.5% of the atmospheric pressure on our planet, equivalent to about 0 0.0145 kilograms per cubic meter of atmospheric density. But it's been over six months now, and the atmospheric pressure has dropped quite a lot, simply due to these seasonal variations and basically because Mars is now sort of in the late summer, early fall stage. So if we were to compare it to planet Earth, it's basically becoming a little bit cooler. By the way, the website from the Planetary Society compiled the entire table explaining each season on Mars and showing us when it starts and when it ends. As you probably know already, Martian year is almost double the length of the Earth year, so the seasons here are slightly different. And so because of this, the Martian atmosphere is now dropping even more. Specifically at this moment, it's approximately at 1% of the Earth atmosphere, which is below the design limitation of 1.2%. And even though the difference is only 0.2%, it's actually enough for the helicopter to start experiencing problems when flying. And so generally for any helicopter or any sort of a drone that uses very similar technology for flight, there's a really important concept known as the thrust margin. Thrust margin refers to a kind of an excess thrust that allows the helicopter to perform different maneuvers, such as pitch down or pitch up, and increase its speed. In this case, the thrust margin for ingenuity is approximately 30%. And so this additional thrust is required for the helicopter to perform nominally. But the thing is, in these lower pressures, the thrust margin drops down to about 8%, which technically is no longer enough to perform certain maneuvers. In this case, it's sort of similar to a normal helicopter flying really high in the air, where the thrust margin is so low that the helicopter starts stalling and sort of starts dropping from the skies. In other words, it becomes really difficult to operate a helicopter when the density is really low. But there's obviously a solution to this. You could hypothetically spin the blades even faster. 
and by spinning the blades faster you would produce more lift and thus produce more thrust margin as well. And so that's what the team behind Ingenuity decided to do. They decided to investigate if this could potentially be a solution. Making the blade spin approximately 10% faster at the RPM of about 2800. The previous RPM was only about 2500. And so that's exactly what the scientists have been trying to do for the past month. They wanted to test if this actually works. So following a somewhat uneventful 13th flight, before the 14th flight, the team decided to test the really high speed rotation of the blades just to see if it would create any potential problems for the helicopter itself. And one of the potential problems they sort of expected is what we sometimes refer to as resonance. Now when it comes to resonance in engineering, I think the most famous example is the Tacoma Bridge that collapsed back in 1940. This is essentially the example of what resonance can do if a structure is built incorrectly. You might already know the story, but essentially what's happening here is that the natural vibrations of the bridge have the exactly same frequency as the vibrations produced by the wind in this particular region. And because of this, the wind ends up magnifying the vibrations of the bridge itself, which then sort of oscillates even more and eventually collapses because it just can no longer sustain itself. And so in theory, something extremely similar could happen to the helicopter if the blades spin at the resonance that's similar to the other vibrations produced by the helicopter as it flies through the air. Because it was never tested at these particular RPMs, it's unfortunately unknown to the scientists if the resonance is going to be produced until they actually test it and until they make it fly in the Martian atmosphere. The other obvious problem is the fact that it's going to need more energy. Because of the 10% higher RPM, the system will have to withstand much higher loads and this could potentially wear out some of the parts much faster. And then there's also the problem of the speed of sound itself. At 2800 RPM, the blades are going to be spinning at about 80% the speed of sound on Mars. And because of this, they're going to start experiencing a lot of aerodynamic drag which in turn will actually make the flight itself extremely difficult. And so at these really high rotation speeds, it becomes almost impossible to make this flight efficient. Nevertheless, before the 14th flight, the scientists decided to test this on the ground and the test was completely successful. The blades were spinning just fine and it seemed to have been working. And so the scientists were planning to perform the 14th flight back in mid-September, but it didn't work. There was an anomaly something was not allowing the helicopter to take off the ground and so the system shut down completely. And following the initial investigation and looking through the logs from the helicopter, the culprit behind the recent anomaly turned out to be the flight servos. The system detected a problem in the servos and shut down the entire procedure canceling the flight. So it was actually an automatic shutdown. And the team actually posted this picture showing us exactly which part was responsible for this. But first, what exactly is a servo? Well, if you've ever done robotics, you've probably seen something like this. These devices are normally responsible for somehow sensing and correcting errors and usually are able to do so automatically. Although generally they do come in different shapes and sizes and generally control different functions of either mechanical or electrical activity. But in case of ingenuity, this little device right here is the servo that created the anomaly that basically shut down the entire system. With the data from the helicopter suggesting that the servo was oscillating or basically moving around by approximately 1 degree, which was completely unexpected by the system and so the entire flight was shut down. And on top of this, at this particular moment, Mars is actually right behind the Sun. And because of this, it's sort of impossible for the mission to communicate with the probe and to receive any more details or to try to conduct other tests. They'll have to wait until mid-October before they can resume these tests. Nevertheless, they do have some theories on what's probably happening here. The first theory is that, well, maybe, the things have just become too old. These servers are just no longer attached as solid as they used to be attached and so they're wiggling a lot more. And basically because the mission has already sort of been extended way more than originally planned. And for those of you who have used drones before, you know that sometimes the actual blades stop working for one reason or another. And so this is definitely something that could potentially happen here as well. The other explanation is actually maybe because of the high speed spin test. Maybe because of the speed involved here, Instead of the resonance on the entire helicopter, it seemed to have created some kind of a unique oscillation in the servos themselves. 
And so one way of possibly testing this is obviously by speeding the blade slower. And so if the oscillations disappear at slower rotations of the blades, well this just means that it's going to be impossible for the helicopter to fly um, in the future, at least using the high speed of rotation. And because the atmospheric pressure on Mars is not going to be getting denser for the next year or so, it means that the mission is probably going to be finished. And so at least for now, during the Martian conjunction, when Mars is behind the Sun, the only thing that's going to be happening is the general communication between Perseverance and Ingenuity as they sort of send the signals to each other in order to make sure that they both stay alive. But in mid-October, we'll finally get signals back from Perseverance and we'll finally be able to see if the mission is still a go or if Ingenuity is going to have to retire simply because it's unable to fly anymore. Which I guess would be kind of ironic because it had its 13th flight. Unlucky 13 I guess. Which I guess would be kind of sad. But the mission has been a dramatic success. With Ingenuity outperforming any initial expectations. With this failure also teaching us a little bit more about why things don't always work on Mars or how things can go wrong for some of the future missions. And in one of the previous videos that you can find somewhere right there, I've actually mentioned this mission right here that's probably going to be launching to Mars in the next few years. Assuming of course everything works out as planned. And so for now I guess that's all we know. The mission had an anomaly, the anomaly is most likely caused by either the parts getting a little bit too old or possibly because the blades were spinning too fast, but we're not going to know if the mission is finally finished or if it's going to be continuing until sometime in late October. Well, until then, check out all of the relevant details and links, including the blog posts uh, from the scientists behind this mission in the description below. And in the next few weeks, we'll definitely be talking more about the mission and about the resolutions or solutions to some of these problems. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that happens to have the Ingenuity as its main logo. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.